Hey, hey, buddy, welcome. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks, thanks a lot. What's up? Are you okay physically? Uh, I am. Thank you. Thank you for asking. Okay, uh, um, it's um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great day, and it's a great day to be with you guys. I'm pretty excited. Okay, uh, can I start the meeting officially? Give it short introdu introduction of you. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this webinar. Uh, and I hope you are doing well. Today we have Jean Georges Perrin, one of the best guys in all around the globe that knows Spark very well. Believe me, honestly, I'm saying. Uh, Jean Georges is the author of Spark in Action and a lifetime IBM champion. Number yeah. one. Again, believe me, he plays on the Geniuses League and just due to the tight schedule of Gigi, we only have 45 minutes today, 35 minutes assigned to Gigi and only 10 minutes for a dear participant to ask their question. Okay, back to Gigi and you should know that today we are all ears. Okay. <laughs> Well, this is this is this is this is a kind of an intro. Um, let me let me share my screen. Uh, I prepared a, a few slides, uh, and it, it's it's um, it's a spe it's a special deck for you guys. Okay, so um, all right, so so as Mohamed was saying, my name is Jean Georges or JG, and uh, I often. Uh, uh, my my parents probably never thought that I would have an international career when they named me like that in France, like a little over fifty years ago. Okay, so it's kind of a little bit uh, of a mouthful to pronounce, but um, that's that's what it is. I am um, I I am uh, doing a lot of things. Uh, writing is one of is one of my passion, um, and you know I moved to the U.S. about ten years ago. And unfortunately, nobody told me that I would be writing books when I came to the U.S. Okay, and that's uh, and that's what happened. Okay, so I started by writing Spark in Action, and uh, I'm writing all the books. I'm also, um, and that's the only advertisement I'm going to make in this. In this, uh, you know, I live in the U.S. now, so there's advertisement everywhere. So. Um, this is a user group. I invite you to join. It's it's free. There's a lot of people that, that can join this. Uh, you will find a lot of people that are really generous with their time. Uh, we have a Slack channel. I hope you can have access to that. Um, and you've, you, you, you discuss things like data contracts, for example, or uh, other data or AI or anything like that. So, so um, I would, I would, um, I would highly recommend that uh, you uh, uh, that you yeah, that you join. That's that's it, Mohamed. I've got a little bit of echo from you. Maybe you can mute. Yeah, much better. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, um, so it's it's more it's more for everybody. Okay, so what are we what are we talking here? Okay, we, we we're talking here about moving data. Okay, this is this is. It seems to be the national sport of data engineers. We are moving data because we need to move it from one system to another system, and um, because we want to do something with this data in the next system. It seems like we have not been able to do something smarter for the last 50 years. So we keep doing it, and um, this is this is this is a typical illustration I use when we are talking about moving data from a live system or from different live system to a data warehouse. Okay, so you see that I've got some receipt from a store, some eventually some return to the store, and some new products. And the consequence of that is that I'm moving this data into different buckets or tables or call them the way you want, but in another place. Um, and so you do this this via this, this store, okay? So you, you move some of the information to different places. And when you create data warehouse like that, it's creating a lot of those arrows here which are data pipelines um, and when you're when when you're doing that you're um, you're, you're filling you're filling all these all these buckets uh, with data and every time there's something new that happens it's breaking everything okay so um, 
what what we decided to do and and making is to do data lakes and why we did data lakes is because we just take the data and we put them directly in the in the same buckets okay all my store all my store receipts go in my same bucket my store receipt bucket all my returns go in the returns bucket etc cetera, etc cetera. and then you put the burden on on the on the consumer to oh i want to be able to extract this data um and, and be and do something for it so and one of the consequences of that is that a data lake can often be polluted and so i um what what we've been seeing over over the evolution of that is that we are going from this relational database to data warehousing to data lake and 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 data and lake house but on top of that to make things a little bit more usable and more uh, organized we could use um, uh, we we could use something called a data mesh okay and um, i'm actually talking a I'm not going to talk too much about data mesh, but that's kind of where we're to set a little bit of decorum around what 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 we're talking about. Um, we've got data in relational database, data warehouse, data lake, lake house, data mesh. We need to move all these things. We need to be able to transform all this data, and that's where Spark come into uh, action. <laughs> so when we look at that, uh, I, I want. Let's let's dive now into 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 Spark, and um, I like I like this. It's been a long time I didn't use this 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 photo. It's a photo of um, of Rob Thomas, the guy in the guy with the dark suit here at IBM at a conference in in Las Vegas, where uh, Rob was basically saying, "Hey, um, I'm 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 Spark is an operating system." Uh, and it's an operating system for analytics. And then I, I said, okay, well, I don't know what he, what he had. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what he, if he, you know, had a little bit too much to drink before that, or if he was I or something. But the thing is, it was kind of surprising. So I, I had to understand a little bit why 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 I did that and why, why he was saying that and and based on that basically I realized that what was an analytics operating system so when you're thinking traditionally you've got hardware operating system and you've got applications on top of it right um, and um, so uh, and and then on top of that when you when you want to scale, usually what you've been doing, okay, is to have several several of those boxes, hardware and operating system, on top of which you would be uh, building applications. But as your applications are growing also, you, you realize that there's a part of your applications that is analytics and part of your application, which is about the distributing, the, the distribution aspect of the IT itself. Okay. So how do I distribute the workload on all these things? So when I'm doing that, the, the thing is I'm putting all this effort into an application. So with, which I don't think it's it's really the goal of the application. You should be focusing as as engineers. You should be focusing on the outcome of the application, not really on making sure that all these semaphores and all this communication between elements are are working. So, when we look at what the paradigms that you could be doing is adding a distributed and an analytics operating system on top of that, you can build your application, and that's Spark. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think that's that's kind of what drove me into thinking about par, uh, about Spark in a different way. It's not a framework for moving data. It's not a it's not a framework for for analytics only. It's a really analytics operating system because you're going to build your application on top of that. And when you think about that, it's also you can do that with many different languages. Okay. My favorite Java and the rest. Um, uh, so, and, and 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 that's 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 also the, the the qualification of an operating system, right? You, if an operating system, you want it to be able to to be uh, to uh, to extend uh, to different uh, operating to different languages as well. So, 
based on that, that was, Mohammed, the genesis of my, the idea for my book. And, and because when I started writing this book, I said, okay, I'm going to take a different angle than just say, hey, this is about data transformation. It's about really creating, an, uh, creating this, this uh, wide um, uh, stack of, of tools. So when you look at a little bit into detail about what Spark, and you probably know that as well, is that you've got these four pillars, okay, uh, that are a different state of maturity these days. You've got, of course, SQL, streaming, machine learning, and, and, and graph. The big benefit of that is that you rely on the same API. So when you're when you're dealing on on these pillars, okay, and your app, your application, and I like to extend this diagram by that, is really to say that you you learn one API and you can do all of those things. So I think that's kind of a, a little bit the important part to remember when you're thinking about about um, about about Spark. So when you when you when you're looking at a typical application, and we're going to drill down a little bit into that. The, the first thing is usually you connect to a cluster or your local machine, okay? Uh, most machines these days can actually handle uh, workloads, maybe not big ones, but you can, uh, you can, uh, you can do that. Um, then you load the data into it. Then you do something with the data and then you share the results, okay? That's, that's, a, that's a kind of the typical scenario of, of a data pipeline you're doing, okay? And when you remember the diagrams I showed at the beginning with all my arrows everywhere, well, this is this is this is exactly what you're doing. When you drill a little bit into that, uh, what I like to go through is the technical terms we use in the industry. So the first thing is you ingest your data. So that's the first phase of that. When, from the ingestion, the result of that is called uh, bronze data. Some people call that raw data. I've also seen uh, heard people calling that staging, lending, or swamp. Okay, so that's that's kind of the first box here where you've got your data. Then on top of this data, you are going to apply your data quality rules. Okay, making sure that your data means something, and the outcome of that is what we call silver data or pure, what I call also pure data, or sometimes you call it refinery. Uh, pond, sunbox, or exploration zone. Okay, people are very creative with names. So, um, and then after that, this is where you can start transforming your data. The silver is good enough for you. You, it's your good raw material. Okay, if you're thinking about a factory, this is where you know that this data is good. This is the one you want to work with. Then you can start doing some transformation, machine learning, AI, whatever you want, this is where it starts, okay? It doesn't start before. So, and, and at that point, the outcome of that is what I would call gold data. Um, and it's, or you can call it also rich data, or some uh, people call that also production, refined, lagoon, or operationalization zone, which is kind of a, a mouthful by itself. What you can do from it, from, from there, is two things. You can publish it, okay? You can create a data market, or you can feed it to a model, or you can make reports for your boss or, or, or your faculty. Um, and you, um, but, or, or you can cache it. And one way to cache it is to put in Delta Lake or Iceberg or whatever you want these days, okay? Uh, so that's, that's, that's kind of a typical scenario. What, what has been great with Spark and, and what Databricks, the company beyond Spark, has been doing is, and this is probably not even up to date, um, they've created a full ecosystem of different tools that work nicely together. So you've got Spark in the middle, okay, which as you probably know, can ingest a lot of different data. Um, then you can save this into Delta Lake on Delta Engine, and then you can use the data for business via things like Redash, for example, for make, creating dashboard. It's open source from data science using Jupyter and, and Zeppelin, okay, which are also open source. And you can um, you can you can also uh, transfer the data for other purpose of the data engineering. All those components are open source. So 
I think everybody everybody can do it. Okay, it's it's not it's not very. Um, I don't think it's very difficult. It's I think it's a very interesting space to go to go in, and you can you can do it. A lot of people ask me what what you need to be uh, to to do that, um, and and my answer is usually well you need this very special computer I've built myself with Legos. Okay, I'm I'm kind of a Lego geek, uh, so I've got I always have a Lego brick somewhere next to me, uh, so I decided to build a computer with Legos, and that's how you should do it as well. I just kidding, you don't have that. You're just a laptop, even a laptop that is not uh, not 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 recent by any mean can get you started okay and you can and you can get started there and you can build your your first ingestion understand the logic and i'm a big fan of being able to be able to touch things and to be to use a command line and things like that so so please just do that install a linux or windows or whatever and you can just just have fun with with that so before um and another, another, another thing I'd like to talk to you a little bit about is deployment. When we're thinking about what we are doing with with, uh, with with data, is we need to deploy something, right? Um, so typically, you you as as an engineer, you work on something. When the something is ready, you deploy it. Okay. Well, when when I when I when I started a long time ago, uh, uh, my career, one of the first one of the first programming language I used was Visual Basic from Microsoft, and I I remember that uh, this 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 huge book was kind of my reference book. Okay, and this this book was yeah I don't know six hundred seven hundred pages, but the deployment of your application was at the end of the book okay so it was actually page 573 that you start to deploy when i wrote uh, spark in action and 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 uh, um and it's not the only book like that deploying comes early comes as soon as you can because you want to be able in in our current day and age to understand what's going on when you deploy so um, you're you're looking at that's why in, so there's 17 chapters in the book. Sub chapter six was already focusing on deployment. Okay, so I'm not saying buy the book. What I'm saying is deploy early. Okay, and follow this method, which is not new. It's coming from. Uh, um, uh, uh, Mr. Z Mizuno of the Tokyo Institute of Technology, and he developed this this cycle in 1959 for the industry, where we do plan, do, check, act. You plan, you do, you check, you act, and you keep doing these circles. So that's why when you're thinking about that, that is why you um, you need to to think this way. Um, and, and and make sure that you deploy early. You show early what your what 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 uh, what you've done, and you share the results take all as as early as possible. So now uh, I'm familiar with the tower, but uh, uh, me to to talk to about two of my favorite project with Spark, uh, and I wanted to drill a little bit on, into this this these two projects, uh, and then you, and, and and leave plenty of time after for for uh, for, uh, for 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 questions as well. So first, one of my very first projects that went into um into uh, uh, into production was for a, a healthcare company here in the US um, and with spark and uh, we the idea was to be able to scale the data that were on prem to to uh, to the cloud okay so you've got to bear with me this project was if I remember well probably in 2015 20. 16 i think 2016 um so it, it's it was it was 
I would probably do things different now with the technology we have, but but that that's what we did. So let me let me try to explain a little bit. We had uh, we had an operational data store ODS on premise, and we wanted to make sure that the the problem was that a lot of the consumers of this data store would um, over use it okay would 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 that would be too much consumption for that uh for that store for analytics purpose okay e imagine every report every every analysis that they won't be doing was being done against uh this this data store well and it was already not this data store it was already a copy of the data store but it was still uh it was it was not scaling anymore so what we decided, and we went, we also wanted to normalize the data as we were moving the data to um, to um, to uh, to the cloud as well, and we wanted to use the cloud for scale or for for scaling reason. Okay, so um, we we can go on on the, on the cloud for for why it's good and why it's bad for a lot of time, but this was really the good reason of using the cloud is because the loads were unpredictable, so we would ingest the data. Put that in the data store, and um, this this data store for for this reason for for this was based on Elasticsearch because we wanted to be able to have a lot of um, search capabilities within the within the documents and within the everything was becoming a document and in healthcare. Um, it's a lot of document manipulation. Okay, so it was it meets to it meets it made sense to have this, but it was the data store was a little bit of a hybrid data store as well. So it was mainly Elasticsearch, but with other other stores associated to it. And then the distribution part. So the distribution part was was really the interesting part here. We turned what we did is we turned Spark into a server. Okay, so usually when you're when you're using Spark, Spark is either a limited shelf life in a little bit. Okay, you give it something to do, it takes the data, does something with it, and finishes. Okay, and it does not it does not end. It just it keeps. It, 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 I mean, it ends. It it and and the thing is, it's stateless. Okay, so what it has been doing, you forget about it for for the next thing. Okay, so it's like a um you you do you ask it you ask spark to do something it does it and forget completely about it as a minute it's finished and that's good because you want that for security reason why well, you don't want to have your workload to be uh that i don't know um that Razul's workload can be seen by Mohammed or or, or or vice versa right the thing is you really want to make sure that um that that there's the security so we what we did is we turned spark into uh into um uh into this um in, into this server so it could take requests from the different people okay so here you as a consumer that could ask spark hey give me this data set or give me uh give me this data as a payload Depending on whether you wanted for you wanted the data for a single application or analytics. Yeah. That was 2015. <laughs> uh, so 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 we we use Kafka for all other things that that uh, uh, on this project we use Kafka. Kafka was already there to be honest, but the thing we use Kafka for um, for messaging and for uh, and, and for uh, monitoring of of what was going on. Okay, so that was that was that was what we 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 use Kafka for. But um, and at that time, it was really. Uh, very innovative to store massive amounts of data in Kafka. Now, nowadays, it's a little bit more popular, but at that time, it was it was not um, it was not, it was still a little bit uh, considered a, a risky business. Um, but 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 good question, and I would I tell you I would have I'm pro I would probably do things differently now that I did uh, almost ten years ago. Um, Can I ask you another question? Where, 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 Just just one another question, please. Sure, sure. Sorry. Uh, in this example, where are the 
a cluster of Spark? It's on prem or on cloud? It, it's actually it's it's also a good question. Um, this is a very high level architecture. Um, I, I could I could I could drill in, drill into this, but basically this is on prem, and as soon as you leave the is the this purple box here, you go to the project which was nicknamed Mister Freeze. Um, it, that that's the ingestion is actually bringing it to uh, to AWS. Okay, so that was running on AWS. All right. So so that was all right. So that that was that was that was an interesting project uh um for 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 this uh, medical company. The second project that that I that I really loved is and it's um it's an open source project, okay? So so you've got the URL at the bottom here. It's on github.com slash advanced auto parts slash data in the fast lane was uh, the idea was to script Spark. What what we started to realize is that when you're doing ETL with Spark, it's you 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 do a very uh, an awful lot of time. You do the same thing. You take uh, uh, you connect. You do these things. You check that the connection was good. Then you etc cetera, etc. Cetera. You upload the data, and the thing is it's Either you do it in Python and you upload a script, or you do it in Java and you and you run your application. But the thing is, it's it's very verbose, very quickly. So what we wanted to do is being able to script it. Okay, so um, so what we did is is uh, is we put all these ideas together. Okay, uh, we said okay, we wanted it scalable, we wanted open source, we wanted it easy to understand, uh, we wanted it scriptable, we wanted to be able to run in a container, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But one of the things that we really wanted is to be able to source control easily as well. Okay, so when you're thinking about a lot of ETL tools, they are some of the etl tools are you start drawing things okay and and then you you see the flow of your data which is great but it's it's becoming really complex when you want to actually source control it for for regulatory purpose for example so in this in this scenario we created a yaml language for doing that kind of a dsl domain specific language okay uh, and the architecture looks a bit like that um so we were we were uh the 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 the, the way you, you you see that is the way you read this diagram is you add a recipe file okay so this yaml file and you spark um so the, the application dfl would load this this turn this into spark script in, into into spark and then spark will execute the recipe okay so so it's a very a very dynamic way of um, of of of, uh, of doing data transformation um, and, and making it a lot faster than than that. So to answer the question you didn't ask, the cluster was actually here, okay, and and then you had a client that would just create that and 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 parse that. It works as a command line um, to any it works on any size of cluster and. Um, takes any kind of data that Spark can, could, die, could ingest. And the idea was to create directly data marks with it. Okay, so so you could almost, you know, the we didn't we didn't go that far in the project, but you could imagine that you could have a, a, a basic designer on top of the YAML file that would be, for example, used by a business analyst that wants to to, to move the data or something. Okay, so that was that was really um, the second architecture that uh, the second second pro that's my second favorite project with Spark, and it's still not very live, but it's um, it's it's available in GitHub. Any 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 question from anyone? Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, so. I have I have I have a few more. Okay, I'm going to talk to you about what I'm working on right now. Okay, so so 
um so for 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 just a a few a few slide and maybe you'll find it interesting maybe you'll find it super boring but uh, i'm also interested in your feedback about about, about that part okay so it's, um, it's useful thank you uh, i believe uh, keep going for five minutes next five minutes and then we will ask our question okay yep yep I think I think I think five minutes is all I need. All right, I'm going to. Uh, I don't know if you've seen, you've seen this movie. This is a, a, an anthology of the of move of the American movie. It's, it's the Godfather, and he's got a proposition, you, a proposal you cannot refuse. Okay, so I have a contract you cannot refuse. So it's. Um, I have I have a son who's probably about the age of your uh, of your students, Mohamed, and and uh, is a, he just he just actually graduated and uh, he went to um, uh, he went to his first job and he called me, hey Papa. So the first thing is, I, I I don't know about how you he never calls me, right? Either he texts me or something, but in this situation he called me, and he asked me, hey, I've got a problem. My customers. Uh, my users are not very happy about me and they're trying to they're, i'm going to be in trouble because usually usually they get all the data they want uh and it always worked but this time they they didn't get the data they wanted so they were really upset and they wanted to tell me well they wanted they, they you know they, i was afraid of new job i was afraid to lose my job so Basically, I had to look, and what I found is that the upstream system was was actually not uh, working. So I had to do um, I had to I had to, to 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 tell them that it was not my fault. Okay, but I was still very scared. And my answer was, hey, if you had data contracts at the beginning, at the at the input and at the output of your data pipeline, you would know that something was wrong before them. So. What is a data contract? So a data contract, it creates a link between data producers and data consumer. And it creates also a link between the logical representation, the logical world and the, and, and the world uh, and the physical world of, of your implementation. So, and it describes, it, for me, it also describes and it becomes a source of truth for meta metadata okay so okay metadata metadata you know it's the name of the tables the name of the columns etc but when you're thinking about the meta metadata that's a layer on top of that it's the behavior of the data how how is my data quality working how are my slas my service level agreement okay so that's what the data contract is there for and so what what are the problem we're, we're we're solving you're probably most of you are young i've limited experience in the industry but you will see these problems when you're when you're going out and, and being the real in the field and you'll see that they are annoying problems okay so for example Oh, the documentation is either not up to date or non-existent. Okay, or um, this this I'm trying to understand what the customer wants. Okay, by by service level. Oh, I want this data at 9 a.m. Okay, well I can't give you the data at 9 a.m. Okay, what's the consequence if I give it to you at 10? Uh, and and this kind of discussion. Okay, so all of this are problems the industry is is facing. So the idea was to create. Data, data contracts and tools around that. So this is something uh, I started working on when I was at PayPal. And we, uh, we uh, standardized data contract. And uh, after a little time, we, it's now part of the, um, of the Linux Foundation. Okay, so LF AI on data. That's an AI on data part of the Linux Foundation. And it's a project called BTOL. Uh, be told is a Mayan god of creation. So we had to we had to find something inspirational, um, and so we did we did all that um, we 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 did all that with the idea of making sure that if it's standardized, people can easily build tools. When I say people, it could be students, it could be industries, it could be vendors, but there's a way to document easily what your data is about 
and and so we started uh we started last year it's not it's it's been uh not not about not a year yet um and the paypal standard uh, is of course m the most popular because we we didn't transfer it <laughs> the, the right way we should have been doing it but odcs which is a linux sunday uh, standard is now growing faster than than the paypal standard okay so you see that it's uh, on github it's it's growing pretty fast but you will see also something very interesting is the number of contributors okay so that we we started um we started by um um, we started by five at PayPal, and we are now at seventeen. So the number of contributors, you know, it's a, it's the number of cooks you put in the kitchen. It's not because you've got seventeen cooks that it's going faster than we five cooks, because everybody kind of argue a little bit. But we are, we are building a, a stronger, a stronger, a stronger solid, uh, a stronger, um, a stronger standard. Okay, so. Uh, well, having 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 said that, that's what I wanted to conclude on. So, thank you. Let's leave us uh, nine minutes for questions, well, and I can be a little late to my next my next time. So. <laughs> thank you so much, TG, for your great presentation. Okay, anybody in the room, if you have any question, can pose, and GG is here to answer or question. And I, I have I have a question for you guys. Can you put in the chat where you're from? Okay, I, I'm I'm trying to learn more about my geography of Iran as well. So just 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 put things here. Tell me where you're from. <laughs> and we are from Iran. We are all from Iran. I I I I, I guess that. But where in Iran? I see. Okay, I see. Uh, I see Tehran, Shiraz. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> oh, Sydney? That that seems to be outside of uh, uh of Iran. <laughs> Lisbon? I love Lisbon. I I wish I wish I could be uh going on Copenhagen, okay. Well, you know, Legos. Uh so um I uh I wish, I wish, I wish. Uh, I've got a good, I've got a good friend from Iran here in in the US. Uh, actually, a few of them and uh, Belgium as well. Okay, cool. Colombo. Okay, Colombo doesn't seem to be in Iran as well. Uh, and um, he told me, he told me that I should, I should actually, you know, the, the goal would be to have a, have a. I, I'd rather be with you having a lunch, okay, or having dinner around a, around a, a Czech derma, okay. So he told me. Do that. Go, go, go there and do it. Go ahead, Mormon. Gigi, thank you. Uh, we have a question, Mustafa. Here you are. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you for your uh, presentation and providing this uh, opportunity. You uh, I want. Uh, yeah, I want to see the whole concept. Actually, uh, we use Spark in the data engineering field, and I've been applying for different. Uh, tech companies uh, for uh, six months, but uh, actually I got uh, stuck in the in uh, interview session, uh, especially for live coding. Uh, you know, different companies companies have uh, different um, requirements, and they use different tools. Airflow, Spark, AWS, different database. Places. Uh, and I cannot learn all the uh, technologies at the same time. I want to uh, I want you to provide some uh, tips uh, uh, to how uh, can I do uh, uh, new, new position uh, in the data engineering field. Melanie, I think you're creating a little bit of Larson there, uh, of echo. Um, so if I understood your question correctly, and, and feel free to correct me, um, Mustafa, you, um, it's, it's, a, it's a vast field, right? It's a, uh, and, and you're a bit concerned about all the tools that, that there are around there. I think there's, there's a few fundament, fundamental tools, and I'm pretty sure that's the ones that uh, you're, learning, you're learning in school. Uh, and 
that's that's why I think that okay, even if I don't like it, Python is one of those tools. You've got uh, you've got you've got Spark. You've got the basic of AWS. If you understand AWS, you can probably work with any other cloud. What I what I found very useful is trying to understand how things are named in the different technology. Okay, so I was talking about Elasticsearch a little a little earlier. Um, Elasticsearch calls Doc, things documents but when you look at the things that documents are kind of records okay so if you understand how the, what what a record is in um, in um, in a relational database then you understand pretty quickly um, what what is the other concept in another technology and that that has been helping me very quickly okay and or for example uh, i have to switch from aws to azure okay and you find a table that tells you okay this service is called this way in aws but it's going to be called this way there the a lot of these underlying technologies are using are, are the same okay and 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 once you understand one really good really well the other one is really very often just an increment uh, of the of the other technology um so i think i think that's uh um if 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 i hope i answered your question this way thank you thank you uh Gigi, thank you we respect your timing but the last question can i ask one go ahead go ahead go ahead go ahead, go ahead. uh you know uh, all of the guys here are from a background academic background level you know yep, how yep. we can transfer from a from an academic level to an industry level in the world of data engineering so it's 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 a, it's 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 a it's a it's a great question um it's a great question and i may not have the answer for you mohammed uh what 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 i've experienced so i love working with universities okay so when i was when i was when i when i when i lived in france i was running startups and we partnered with the university of strasbourg um and um and it was a great experience okay the people people are smart people are um are curious okay they they, they uh so i would say the drawback a little bit because it's not a perfect world is that uh f faculty have a different timeline in general that in the industry because the industry is always we we always want things for yesterday where the faculty have a little bit more time usually okay so so that that was that was not a shocker uh i i, I came in knowingly but to be honest, I was not expecting it to be that different. Okay, I, I still, <laughs> okay, we're, we're, we're we talking months, they're talking years. Okay, so, okay, okay, I understand. But the thing is, it, it's, it's going fast, okay? So, so, so that's probably something you need to be cautious when you, when you talk to, industry, to, to, to people in the industry, okay, um, at, at large, okay, industry, retail, whatever, uh, that, that the, the pace is a little bit, different uh and they expect they expect results more quickly i don't know how education is done in iran at all uh and i'm, I'm sorry about that uh in france also we have a lot of internships and we have a lot of apprenticeship even in it okay so so when i was a kid um when you were talking about apprenticeship is because you were going to be a plumber okay or you were going to be a woodworker but nowadays and even when i was in france when i was hiring people it was very often as the idea of having some apprenticeship and when i was um and and, and when i was in in france uh, um, myself as, as a student i i did a few uh, i did a few internships as well i think this is a great way to create this link between the university and um and 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 the private sector the um, here in the us it's a, it's it's weird but it's a it's a little bit different so i was talking about my son so it's a kind of a real story okay i i romanced it a little bit uh but um he, he was not he, he finished his master's degree and he, he, he did some train he did some internship because i i pushed him to towards internship but there was nothing in the in this in this in the in the 
in his past, okay, in his journey, his scholarship journey, that was saying, "Hey, do do that." So I think I think um, I think this is something that is really important for for the the kids at large, okay, or the young the young adults there, uh, and and for the university as well, because you need to be connected, you need to to create this link, and then uh, and then you can create project okay i'm 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 really i i I'd, I'd love to go back to doing more project with universities i i love their ideas i love the way they think i love in a way their timeline which is not as 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 fast uh as um as um as the industry is so thank you so much for joining us today Gigi. one last question did you read all the book behind so <laughs> <laughs> a, 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 a lot a lot of the a lot of the books a lot of the books behind are are actually comic book they are french comic book so you tintin uh asterix um um so 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 that that's my cultural heritage okay your inner kid is is it still alive your inner kid oh my my hey, i i'm i'm you know, I need something in my hands, and and those are Legos. Okay, so I I'm playing with. Uh, so my 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 inner kid is really alive. Is that's 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 for sure. And my 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 latest books, okay, are are those. I Let's wish I could send some. Yeah, go ahead, Melanie. Ask your question. We have five minutes. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, first of all, I wanna be. I wanna say I'm grateful for your uh, amazing introduction for this technology and as and uh, i i was surprised because you said you uh, you've used uh, this technology about 10 years ago and currently uh, i'm studying uh, big data technology like spark but i was sick i was surprised i didn't know it is an old technology among uh, other technologies for example kafka or uh, other technology uh, is that uh, uh, I wanna uh, I wanna ask you is that uh, an oldest technology between other big data engineering? Uh, yes, am I right? For example, well, in comparison to Kafka or I don't know. Uh, so so so, so, so or the other technologies. I I I think I think we are. So, so all these technologies are not are not super recent. But when you think of it, okay. So I was born in seventy one, and seventy one was when Cod published uh, his MIT paper where he, he talked about the relational databases. Okay. So, 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 it's all of that is, is not is not young. Okay. So, so, what is young? And often also, I, I got the questions from from younger. people people about what should i learn what what's the next big the next big thing okay so a lot of people say oh it's going to be ai okay our industry it in general okay informatic in general is very much a victim of marketing uh so 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 right now everybody says oh we need uh we need ai okay so we need to do something with ai or we need to we need to we need to jump in uh, um we need to jump to, to 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 make that or otherwise we're going to be late and blah 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 so the thing is they're not completely wrong okay so i think i, I believe in ai I, I think that ai is probably doing something in the future is it this massive bubble that 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 we 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 they try to make us believe that this is true i i don't know i think the fundamentals of data engineering are still in the writing okay yeah, we okay. so so, so big up this way i think yeah, yeah, and 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 one thing, for example, um, is so I started my career in the mid '90s, okay, where yeah. we were using waterfall methods to build software. In the in and so I would say the two, the twenty the twenty to the twenty ten, you see all this agile movement, okay, for building software. So I don't know if you're doing more software or more data, but if you're doing software, you're probably doing agile. If you're if you're doing data, it's still not there really with 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 agile okay so what we are and why it's an interesting time is the technology is moving slowly and 
or, or fast, depending on some paths. But the thing is, the technology, the tools are are not as interesting as what the methods are changing. That's why I talked to you today also about the data contracts, okay? Yeah. Because this is this is where we are going. This is bringing agile. Uh, this is to um, to to data engineering. Okay, so I hope I kind of understand. Okay. I, I answered your question. Uh, I have one more question. Okay, go. Uh, are, you, are you familiar with serverless data warehouses, for example, Google Google BigQuery? How yeah, does it yeah. work? I mean, how can it be possible serverless? How does them work? Well, and and that's 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 a perfect example of of where I say the marketing is is actually um, yeah. <laughs> is actually uh, brainwashing us. Oh, can you make a server work without a server? Okay, because that's kind of the promise of the thing is, okay, we're we're going to make it serverless. So by serverless, it means that there's no server. Well, the thing is, it's there's a server. You just don't see it. Okay, uh, it's basically and especially that's on what. The cloud? Yes, it it's it's on the cloud, and that's that's yeah. exactly it. They they hide it from you, okay, uh, and they they manage the administration. But if you look underneath the different layers of the things, you will still find the CPUs, you will still find the RAM, you will still find the hard drive, even if they tell you that, oh, it's all taken care of. And that's true, it's all taken care of. But you, yeah. as an industry, and going back to what we were talking with Mohamed about the industry, is you are paying a premium to go to use this thing because you're, you're paying on the, on the usage okay of what you're of yeah. what you're actually yeah. using and it's they call it serverless because you don't pay for the server you don't pay for the administration of the server that's and that's 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 what it is but there's really a server but this seems like oh it's it's new but it's not new ibm did that with the mainframe and it's still doing that with the mainframe you 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 uh, and that was like maybe more than 50 years ago okay so so be careful of marketing Okay, in our industry, there is a, there is too much marketing that is actually mixing. Uh, there are know. very numerous competition in this field. I think. Yeah, yeah, and and, and yeah. they need to be they need to be creative. They need to find something, but they actually scrambling the the message. Okay, the the, the message yeah. is and for us engineers. It's it's difficult because you're not to, when you're serving you're not the boss of the company right as an engineer you uh, and especially in IT you're you're really the boss of the company you're talking to someone who is a boss and he may he may they may not okay he or she may not have the knowledge the technical knowledge but they hear they they getting this thing oh it's serverless so we don't need servers anymore okay and that's where you have to be the the, the you have to bring the bad news. Do the same thing. Well, yeah. yes, there's no server, but your 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 bill at the end of the month is going to be pretty, pretty, pretty much higher. Okay, so so. Very interesting. Thanks for your explanation. You, you're very welcome. If, if guys, if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn or or anyway, okay, uh, Mohamed, if if people want to join me by email, you can you can share my email as well. Um, the, on LinkedIn, when when you connect with me, just remind me remind me that you were there because I got so many requests from from many people, and I'm I'm trying to filter a little bit with who I connect with. Okay, so I'm not trying to avoid you. It's just like I I like to know. Don't be a stranger. Okay, that's that's it. Thank you so much, Gigi. It was a great pleasure for us to have you today here. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks to you and, and anytime, Mohamed. Bye-bye. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day. Goodbye. Thank, Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Great. Thank you. Bye-bye.